down left. Yes, got it. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I'm using a wand to cast spells in Hogwarts Legacy. Like a real wizard. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Back when the first trailer of Hogwarts Legacy was dropped, I had an epiphany. Imagine how amazing would it be in order to get an authentic Hogwarts experience that instead of using a controller or keyboard and mouse to cast spells, how about a wand? Now the wand will move in a certain pattern, for example in this way for Expelliarmus, and it would cast the Expelliarmus spell in game. The first thing I decided to do is some research. I had a hunch that there's something out there such as a programmable wand which has a bunch of sensors to determine its positioning, gravity and movement, etc. Now what gave me the hunch is that the Harry Potter brand is worth billions of dollars and that it has produced a number of items to engage children in learning. And at the same time, I do know that there is a lot of educational coding items out there and maybe, just maybe, the brand produced something that I've been looking for. Lucky for me, a quick Google search led me to this, the Harry Potter Cano Coding Kit. This is a DOI coding kit that is produced by Cano. It basically shows you how to build and use a Bluetooth coding wand to learn to code through an interactive and challenging way. Best part is, is the Bluetooth feature. I don't need to plug it in with a cable or anything like that. Next thing I did was to check on eBay to see if there are any available used and cheap kits. And turns out there's plenty. I'm not gonna buy a brand new kit for this. Finally, I have my wand. Now I started to do some research on people using the wand for outside projects that don't really relate to Cano. I then found this instructable by Mars Biel Jr. who used a wand to allow his daughters to turn their Christmas tree lights on and off. Turns out his code utilizes a Python script that was created by Gamma Games. And a Raspberry Pi. Gamma Games' script allows the wand to be readable and usable, as it allows me to view and use the gestures and movements by the wand. You can find demo scripts on Gamma's GitHub. One demo script that will be definitely important later on is the gesture script. I'll explain why, why it's needed later. I now have a wand. I have a way to read the gestures and movements of the said wand and the platform I'll be doing it all on, the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now the next issue is how do I turn the wand movements and gestures into a way to cast spells in Hogwarts Legacy? There has to be a way that I could turn my wand movements into keyboard button presses. Again, thanks to Mr. Google, I found an article written by Random Nerd Tutorial which turns a Raspberry Pi Zero into a USB keyboard. Perfect. I could turn the wand gestures into keyboard button presses since in Hogwarts Legacy, each spell has an assigned number to them from 1 to 4. All I need to do is set up my spells in Hogwarts Legacy and make sure it matches in my code. For example, if I press 1 on the keyboard, it does Expelliarmus. So, if I do the one gesture for Expelliarmus, the Raspberry Pi Zero W sends the number one button press command to my PC, which Hogwarts Legacy will see as number one being pressed and will do Expelliarmus. Now this is the overview of my plan. One, I purchased a wand which will send the gestures and wand movements to the Raspberry Pi. Two, the Raspberry Pi reads the wand gestures and then three, sends it to the PC as keyboard button presses and then finally four, Hogwarts Legacy will interpret those keyboard button presses to cast corresponding spells. Now all I need to do is start and finish the code, in which I bloody did. Now I'll explain a bit of my code, especially the important parts which you can change and put in your own gestures. Now, in the gesture wand class section, so about here, this is where you, you essentially put in your own gestures and spells which you want to perform in game. Some have been pulled by Gamma Games such as Loomis and I believe Nox as well. Whereas I put in Accio, Repairo, Revelio and etc. Now by using the existing information available online on their wand movements for you know the corresponding spells on certain wikis and even on the Kano wand spell sheet. However for ancient spell, ancient throw spell, basic spell I just made it up. Like for example, the ancient spell is just me tracing the letter Z in the air with the wand. Z being the letter to press for ancient spell in Hogwarts Legacy by default. But if you want to insert accurate gestures and wand movements, use Gamma Games' gesture script. Trace the spell with the wand and it displays the corresponding movement and then just copy and paste it into my script and give it a name. There are eight different directions, up, down, left, right, up, left, up right, down left, down right, that can be detected. Flick the wand up, you get a U. 
you know, you get the gist. Do a bunch of one movements. It translates those movements into those eight directions. And pretty simple. Works great. Surprisingly accurate. Now, if you move down to the main section, we get a bunch of if wand spell commands. The first you see are the unchangeable spells, the default spells, such as Protego, which is the letter Q. Q. Revealio, which is the letter R. B for basic spell and so forth. For but basic spell, it's normally set as mouse click, but I changed it to the letter B to make it simple enough, especially to program the script. Now using Protego as an example, when the script detects a Protego spell casted by the wand, it will print the Protego spell detected. And since I'll be, because I'm normally connected to my Raspberry Pi through SSH, it will just pop up as Protego spell detected. Then it will send a corresponding key press to the PC, which is the letter Q. This is this section. After that is done, it would immediately release the keyboard. Without this code, this bit of line, it would essentially just keep spamming Qs. And last but not least is one spell none, wand back into rest state. Now out of this entire line, this is the only important value. Now this is the decimal value of the letter Q, 20. On my Hogwarts Legacy game, it's set up that whenever I press Q, the Protego spell is activated. However, let's say if you're on your PC, you have a setup as M, you need to change that value. So you go to the universal serial bus usage. What is this? Usage tables. Go to table number 12 and you look up for the letter M. Ah, 16. You change that to then 16. You see, if you go back here, you go look up the number 20. It's Q. Okay, now let's scroll down to level one, the first row of spells. This is the first row that it's unlocked. The first four spells you can keep on hand. There you go. Level one, first row of spells. I have Expelliarmus set up as number one. So whenever the number one key is pressed, ex the Expelliarmus is casted. Incendio is number two. Levioso is number three. And Accio is number four. This is set up exactly how it is in my Hogwarts Legacy game. Now for the second row of spells. You find Loomis as number one. You find Nox, so doing either of those commands will trigger Loomis or Nox as they both send the number one key press to my PC. I kept both of them in to make it a lot more accurate. <laughs> now, two is Disillusionment, three is Reparo, and four is Accio. At this point, I didn't really have a four spell, so I just put it in anyway. Now, third and fourth row, we'll just skip through these. It's pretty obvious what's what. Now, if you want to change a spell, let's say row one, spell one, for which in my case is Expelliarmus, all you need to do to change it to another spell is to replace the name here and replace this here. This is more important because this is essentially the actual spell, whereas this is just prints out the information of what spell is printed. So this is just great to let you know what exactly you're casting. So if I want to change this to Wingardium Leviosa, I'll go scroll up, copy this, scroll all the way down to here you go. Copy and paste and then copy and paste. Well, there you go. You don't need to change this because I already set this up for you. It's just these two lines you have to actually modify. Now I know this method isn't perfect, this code. When spells have been chosen with each number and row associated for each spell, this makes it so that there are four different wand gestures, four spells that can trigger a button press. For example, let's use number two as an example. So with the first row, number two triggers Incendio. However, in the next row, level two, it triggers Disillusionment. Level three, it triggers Flipendo. And lastly, the fourth level, it triggers we're Guardian Leviosa. So there are four different spells that can trigger one button press. Four different gestures that can trigger one button press. So if you're in the wrong row, such as the first row, but you want to do the one gesture for Wing Guardian Leviosa, it will trigger Incendio. So it's up to the player to remain vigilant. I've so far set myself up so that the first row are the spells that I want to use during battle, while the other rows can be used for different utilities, such as Conjuring, not the movie. Now I'm done explaining the code. 
Now let's do a bit of a demonstration of how it works. All right, it's time to connect to my Raspberry Pi that has everything set it up. Uh, yeah, that looks right. I'll log in as Mo. My password is I love Harry Potter 69. All right, go CD download, CD Kano want demos. Now in this folder, you find a gesture Python script that's by Gamma Games. That helps me translate my wand movements into gestures and commands in which I could put in my Hogwarts Legacy um, script. And I also have the Kano wand uh, folder that I got off uh, Gamma Games' GitHub. Without that folder, the Hogwarts Legacy code will not work. Once I'm ready, I will sudo Hogwarts Legacy. Now it's scanning. I pressed the button on my remote. Good. Now the thing is it tends to, as you can see, it kind of did screw up. Then the only way I actually fixed it was actually to take the batteries out of the wand and put it back in again and now it works. Now let's see what I can do with the wand. Let's see if I am a true wizard. All right, let's try this. Now that's ancient throw. Down right, up, down left. So down right, up, down left. Yes, got it. Yes. Spelliamus. There you go. That's right. With the wand, you can cast a backwards N in order to change the spell row. Makes it easier and you don't need to use the keyboard as much. I want up. Lumos. Now let's do Nox. Incendio. Got it, yes. Now here's a clip of me defeating a naughty wizard by using a wand and my Xbox One controller. The Xbox One controller was only used for movement and I believe dodging and taking potions. Even though it works, there are some areas of improvement, some things that could have been done better. The first one is that it's quite difficult to game with the Xbox controller and the wand in your hands. So I came up with the idea of using a Wii nunchuck, nunchuck breakout adapter for the Adreno and an Adreno Pro Micro. The nunchuck in my hand will be definitely be better as I could use the joystick to move, C button to dodge attacks and Z could be just the interactive button. It reduces the need for me to use the keyboard. I can also program it in a way that by holding the Z and the C buttons, it allows the joystick to act as the camera to look around. For example, with the Xbox controller, the left joystick is to move, while the right joystick is to look around. But with the nunchuck, it will be doing both jobs. By combining the Wii nunchuck and the wand, I believe it will greatly improve the Hogwarts Legacy experience. The second one is that occasionally it happens about 40% of the time, the script crashes or lags. I initially thought it was my code or a lack of resources due to me constantly spamming wand gestures, but once I put a tissue inside the battery compartment of the wand, it greatly reduced the amount of crashes. Honestly, I think it's a battery contact issue. If I shake the wand a little too hard, it loses the battery connection as the wand undergoes a significant amount of momentum and force. It's an easy fix to be honest. The third one is that it takes a lot of effort to cast a spell accurately and sometimes I may do the wrong gesture or the Raspberry Pi misinterprets my command. For example, I, I actually try to do Accio but it ends up becoming Incendio. It could be an issue with my code or that I actually need to practice and hone my wizarding skill. It's not like if you learn a spell you instantly know how to correctly do it 100% of the time. The fourth problem is that the wand is just a basic wand, it's not my true wand if you take apart the wand you get this little circuit look how flat and small it is 
You can easily modify an existing wand, one of those wands you can find at the Harry Potter world at Universal Studios and slip it in. Then use small button batteries or like a tiny LiPo battery to power the thing, providing more of an authentic experience. Honestly, I'm proud of this project. It's made the game a lot more fun, more interesting and surprising, especially a lot more difficult. I hope someone out there has fun with this. I certainly did. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Share my video. With and also follow me on like Twitter and my Instagram. The code and additional information can be found in my, my description box down below. Goodbye and have a lovely day. I'm not gonna get pinged for copyright. Cause if you think this is similar, you're insane. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs>